Luke chapter 4, verses 1 to 13. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. But for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. I want it all. I want it all. And I want it now. It's a very attractive, very seductive thought to have it all, to have it now. We are in a rush. Technology, communications make so many things possible so quickly. We can email America for a mobile phone and get a reply in seconds. If something breaks down, we need it fixing straight away. We find it hard to wait. We can do so much in just one minute. Well, what can we do in just one minute? The Christian author, poet, broadcaster, Adrian Plass, uh, given some thought to this question in his poem, In One Minute. In one minute, I can ring a friend for the best of all possible reasons. No reason at all. In one minute, I can boil two ninths of an egg. In one minute, as long as I'm not guilty of hesitation, repetition or deviation, I can win a point on just a minute. In one minute, I can find my newspaper, lose my glasses, find my glasses, lose my newspaper, put the kettle on, find my newspaper and my glasses, sit down with my newspaper and my glasses and wonder why the kettle's boiling. In one minute after hearing the doorbell ring, I can, with a 60 second burst of explosive activity, turn my study into a room that looks as if it's a little untidy on the surface, but basically well organised. In one minute, I can make promises to God and mankind that will commit me to another human being for anything up to 60 years. In one minute, six and a bit Usain Bolts can run approximately 617 metres. In one minute, I can watch 59 and a half seconds more of Big Brother than I should ever want to see in this world or the next. In one minute, I can grill a minute steak. A steak that, as we all know, is minute and therefore takes exactly one minute to grill. In one minute, my father-in-law chewed each mouthful of food with the ghost of his dead father standing over him and counting the number of times his jaw moved. In one minute, when a late film is about to begin, I can pray for my family, my church, the church all over the country, the church worldwide, the Queen, our government, everyone else's government, the poor, the rich, the lost, the saved, and anybody else who comes to mind. Quite often, I have a few seconds to spare at the end, which is useful if I need to get a snack ready before the film starts. In one minute, I can waste one minute. In one minute, I can be forgiven 490 times or more. In one minute, I can read this poem. Oh, no, I can't. One or two references you may or may not have been 
familiar with, depending on the, how you uh, use your time and uh, what sort of entertainment you have consumed over the years. But the point's there, isn't it really? In one minute we can do so much. How do we use it? Was Jesus in a rush? Did he want it all? Did he want it now? That was how the devil tempted him. If you want the status, the power, the immortality, then bow down to me. Don't wait. Do it now. If you're the son of God, tell this stone to become bread. If you worship me, all the authority and splendour of the kingdoms of the world will be yours. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here. God's angels will protect you. Want it all. Want it now. Was Jesus in a rush? Did he want to take the shortcut to power and glory? It struck me looking at this passage that Jesus was being invited to take it all and take it now. The devil knew that all authority and power would come to Jesus in the end. The devil knew that but tried to corrupt Jesus by getting him to take it all there and then before the proper time. Jesus being tempted to take and abuse the power he already had. Jesus being tempted, but he knew that there was a purpose that he had to fulfil. Proper time for him to take up his place at God's right hand had not yet come. There was life and love and laughter, healing, saving and delivering to be done. There was the cross and the grave, the empty tomb and resurrection life. There was a right time for all these things, but it hadn't yet come. Everything had its place. Everything had its time. God's timing is right. How about us? Are we tempted to grab it all now, to rush into doing things that need a little longer? It's very easy to convince ourselves that we have to have it all and we have to have it now. I want it all. I want it all. And I want it now. Is it really just children that say that? No doubt that some things do need doing right away. As the book of Ecclesiastes says, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. The things that need to be done today to be done now, like telling people you love them, putting relationships right, keeping promises and serving God. There are also things that we don't need to do now because we have the time God gives us to do them. What those things are will be different for us all. Uh, it's not about putting things off. It's about realising that we can't squeeze every task in life into the next hour and a half. The child psychologist David Weatherford wrote uh, the, the following poem that reflects on that and it's called Slow Dance. Have you ever watched kids on a merry-go-round or listened to rain slapping the ground? Ever followed a butterfly's erratic flight or gazed at the sun fading into the night? You better slow down. Don't dance so fast. Time is short. The music won't last. Do you run through each day on the fly? When you ask, how are you, do you hear the reply? When the day is done, do you lie in your bed with the next hundred chores running through your head? Better slow down. Don't dance so fast. Time is short. The music won't last. Ever told your child, we'll do it tomorrow. In your haste, not seen his sorrow. Ever lost touch, let a friendship die. Because you never had time to call and say, hi. Better slow down. Don't dance so fast. Time is short. The music won't last. Where you run so fast to get somewhere, you miss half the fun of getting there. When you worry and hurry through your day, it's like an unopened gift thrown away. Life isn't a race. Do take it slower. Hear the music before the song is over. Some challenging thoughts in, uh, in, that, uh, in that poem. Life isn't a race, no, but it is for living. Sometimes when I decide to have it all now, we miss things that would have been good for us. Jesus says in John's Gospel, 
have come that they may have life, life in all its fullness. Abundant life is our destiny. Zest for life? Yes, absolutely. Want it all now? No, not always helpful. I don't want it all now. I want there to be something else to discover, something else to enjoy, something more to find amazing in this wonderful world with the wonderful people that God has made and given to us. Something new to explore, life in all its fullness. Occasionally, people ask themselves the question, if I had to live my life over, uh, what would I do differently? And it's a good question because it feeds our imagination. We probably answer it truthfully in different ways at different times, depending how we're feeling what our circumstances are. Well, I'd like to close with uh, another poem, and this one's written by Adrian Plass, and it's called If I Had to Live My Life Over. And the, the poems that I've been sharing with you uh, in this uh, short uh, uh, video are actually taken from a, uh, a CD called the, the Time Project, which is a collaboration of artists and musicians looking at the way we view time. Uh, a few years ago, it was sold in aid of Helen and Douglas House near Oxford. Helen House being the world's first children's hospice, and Douglas House, the UK's first hospice for young adults from 16 to 35. And you can Google them to find out about that work. Uh, the ethos of the house is living life to the full. It's not length of life, but depth that's important. And everything is done to make sure that every second counts. So here's uh, the poem. Um, it's um, actually it was read by Adrian Plus on the uh, on, on the, the CD, but uh, it's actually credited as anonymous. So here's a poem. If I had to live my life over, if I had to live my life over, I'd dare to make more mistakes next time. I'd relax. I would limber up. I would be sillier than I've been this trip. I would take fewer things seriously. I would take more chances. I would take more trips. I would climb more mountains and swim more rivers. I would eat more ice cream and fewer beans. I would perhaps have more actual troubles, but I'd have fewer imaginary ones. You see, I'm one of these people who live sanely and sensibly, hour after hour, day after day. Oh, I've had my moments, and if I had to do it again... I'd have more of them. In fact, I'd try to have nothing else, just moments. One after another, instead of living so many years ahead of each day. I'd be one of those people who never go anywhere without a thermometer, a hot water bottle, a raincoat and a parachute. If I had to do it again, I would travel lighter next time. If I had to live my life over, I'd start barefoot earlier in the spring and stay that way later in the fall. I'd go to more dances. I'd ride more merry-go-rounds. I would pick more daisies. So as we begin Lent, as we reflect upon the challenges Jesus faced, the challenges we face, but also the opportunities uh, and the hope and the life that God gives us, let us pray. Lord God, we thank you that in and through Jesus we have life, life in all its fullness. Help us to make the most of that life, to take hold of it, to use our time wisely, to use it well, to do now the things that we need to do now, and to be wise about those things that don't need doing straight away. Help us not to be in a rush for things, except to be in a rush to love and serve you, to love and serve others, to do your will. Guide us by your Holy Spirit, we pray that we might have joy and a real depth of assurance within our hearts. For we ask it in the name of your Son, Jesus, who faced temptation, suffering, death for us, and came through in glorious resurrection. In his name we pray. Amen. Thanks for listening. Take care. God bless you.